this is B1 stem cells. If we uh, wind it back for a second to um, the moment of conception, this isn't drawn to scale, uh, the sperm are a lot smaller in reality. Here's our egg cell, here's my rather enlarged sperm. Sperm and egg cell will join together, in fact it's not about the sperm and egg cell joining together, it's about the sperm and egg cell nuclei joining together. And they form a brand new cell called a zygote. So the fertilised egg is referred to as a zygote. In terms of genes at this moment, um, sorry, in terms of chromosomes at this moment, we've gone from 23 in the sperm, 23 in the egg, add together, we've got 46 in total, 23 pairs. Okay. In fact, this uh, zygote is it's surrounded by a whole um, host of other cells, and something called a zona, uh, which is a bit like an eggshell, I suppose. But we're going to ignore that for the time being. The zygote then starts to go through um, several stages of cell division, or mitosis. So, it goes from being a single egg, and it basically divides into two. New cell, and then it will divide again into four. Now, if you notice the actual, from my amazing drawings, uh, the actual size of the cell itself isn't getting any bigger. The zygote is, is a very, very large cell because the egg cell is very, very large. When it divides, it actually divides up and gets a little bit smaller. And then it divides again four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're now at an eight cell stage. Okay, let's just put the number of cells on there, just because we can. Now, all the way up to this stage um, of development, we could take, even at this eight cell stage, we could take one of those cells out, and we could actually grow an entire new organism. I suppose we could take eight of those cells out and grow eight new organisms if we wanted to. Uh, the technical term for this is to say that these cells are totipotent. Think of toti and total. You might also um, come across them being called omnipotent or omnipotent. Okay. Same thing. It can turn into the entire organism. This will divide again this um, ball of cells. So we're going to continue around. So I'm not going to draw it now. I'm not going to draw all the little cells in the middle. It'll look like something like this. Okay, we're at the 16 cell stage. Now at this stage, the cells are slightly different. They start to do what we call specialising. The cells are starting to turn into things. What are they turning into? Well, it turns out not a whole lot yet. Um, the divisions will carry on 32, 64, 128. And at this point, the, the, uh, the embryo looks pretty much like this. It actually turns into a kind of hollow ball with a big mass of cells sitting at the bottom. Okay, And this is actually what's going to develop into our, uh, into our embryo, into our, uh, into our baby. Now these cells here, these ones sitting at the bottom, are sometimes referred to as embryonic stem cells. And those embryonic stem cells can turn into just about any type of cell and organ. Pretty much any type of cell and organ. We can't, can't turn them into an entire organism. We couldn't take one of these out and grow a baby, for example. We can only do that... Um, earlier on in this stage. So embryonic stem cells can turn into any of these tissues and organs we want to do, but it can't turn into an, an entire organism. We could describe these cells as being pluripotent. Plury as in plural, several things. Okay, Totipotent, pluripotent. Totipotent can turn into an entire organism, pluripotent can turn into any of the different cells, tissues and organs. Now, our ball of cells will continue dividing and it'll start to turn into 
you know, more recognisable shapes, perhaps after three weeks we'll start to see the spinal cord if you're in so on, uh, and eventually we'll get our baby starting to appear. There's our baby. A really good source of embryonic stem cells, apart from these original embryos, would be uh, in the umbilical cord. So sometimes embryonic stem cells are taken after a baby has been born, um, and the umbilical cord, which of course would be cut off, the babies don't look like this when they're born, by the way, this is a very early uh, embryo or fetus. When this is cut off, um, a lot of people now are storing umbilical cords, they're freezing them um, as a source of embryonic stem cells in the hope that in the future um, the technology will, will be available that we can extract those embryonic stem cells and use them to grow new organs or new tissues in case this child when it's older ever needs them. So that's a potential source of embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are great because they can turn, we can turn them into basically whatever we want. Now of course our baby will hopefully continue growing into uh, an adult. Very odd looking adult, never mind. There's our adult. Now adults also still contain stem cells but in nothing like the kind of numbers that we would find earlier on. Adult stem cells are found in various bits, for example they're found in the eyes, um, for males they're found in the testes, they're found in places like the, the buds of your teeth, so when your teeth are growing. Um, they're also found commonly in your bone marrow. It's a nice source. However, these adult stem cells are not quite as good as um, the embryonic stem cells or even the, the original sort of totipotent ones. We can describe them as multipotent, which means they can turn into several things. Now the good example of that is bone marrow. Stem cells in your bone marrow, adult stem cells, could turn into white blood cells, for example, or red blood cells. But that's it, they can't turn into brain or nerve cells, they can't turn into bone. So they're multipotent, they can turn into a couple of things. Most of the cells in your body are what we call unipotent. They can only turn into one thing. Okay, so there are some adult stem cells uh, in your body, but there aren't many of them. There's not a lot. So again, just to, to recap, totipotent cells, which can turn into the entire organism, Embryonic stem cells, when you have this ball of cells sitting inside the very early embryo, which can turn into any tissue or organ, but not the whole thing. And then we've got the adult stem cells, which are multipotent, which can turn into a few different things, but not that much. Most of the cells in the body are unipotent. Once they've specialised and changed, that's it. You can't then get them to change back.